Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to try and fix this Sony CD Walkman or a Discman. I don't know why they've gone from CD Walkman to Discman or whether this was earlier or later, I'm not too sure. But I've got a job lot of these, some of these are called Discmans and some of them are called CD Walkmans. I can't remember exactly what I paid, it was a long, long time ago. I think I've already done one or maybe two videos on these already. So I thought I'd uh, take them out and have a look at them. So this one here is a model number D. E J715. I had a quick look on Google, very quick look, and I couldn't find out the date, but when I looked at the PDF instructions, it said 2000. So I'm thinking it's around about 19 to 20 years old. It says on here, it turns on no play. So I've popped some batteries in, and first of all, when I put the batteries in, it didn't do anything. It's, they're slightly rusty, and as well as that, you can see that there is definitely evidence of uh, a leak in battery here, some sort of corrosion. But I've wiggled them around, given them just a very quick scrape, and now we do have life in here. So if you have a look, it's uh, showing up here. I have got a disc, whoa. I have got a disc in here, and it is the uh, infamous Jedward disc that I used in the, uh, in the other one here. Now, as far as I can see, it doesn't matter whether the disc is in or out, it's not doing anything at all. So watch this now, if I go to play, I can't hear anything, I can't hear any movement. If I plug in this speaker so you guys can hear it. All right, listen to this. Okay, so that I presume is pause. And when I take it off that, it's not doing anything. And basically, I can just keep scrolling up. So it hasn't read the tracks because I don't know how many tracks are on here. Maybe 10, 11, 15. I haven't got a clue. But look, I can just keep on going and keep on going. So it doesn't make any difference what I put that on. It's not doing anything. As well as that, if I take the disc out completely, it does exactly the same thing. I don't know if this is supposed to spring up or not. It doesn't seem to, uh, it doesn't seem to kind of open very easily. But anyway, look. If I press play now, it does the same thing. So it doesn't matter if the disc is in there or not. Initially, what I'm thinking is, obviously I haven't taken it apart yet, I'm wondering, if you have a look, there's a tiny little thing here with a corresponding thing up here. So I'm thinking that this is what recognises when the, the drawer is, or whatever it's called, the cover is closed. So I'm wondering if it could be as simple as a faulty switch. Again, you can see corrosion up around here as well. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean the corrosion is from this one because I have got other ones that were badly corroded as well. So maybe they were all stored in the same place and they were all leaking together. But let's take it apart and let's see if we can find out anything that's obvious in the inside. You can see that there's definitely uh, a bit of rust build up around here and in here as well, but that's okay, that won't take long to clean. So it looks like we've got Phillips screws because it's a Sony product, we have nice little arrows going everywhere. So I'm gonna undo these little crosshead screws. Also, it looks like there's another little screw up in here. So that may be, I'm not sure. Maybe that does un undoes this thing here, which makes the lid easy to come off. But anyway, let's take it apart. Really want it to pop apart. There we go. Must be must be clips on it as well. There we are. Excellent. Right. So I think let's uh, yeah. There's definitely corrosion up inside here. Let's just undo this ribbon cable here. So I presume I just have to lift up this white thing. Yeah. There we go. Is that going to slide out? Yeah. Right, so I've got the, the lid free now. So let's concentrate on this little switch down here. So really, if I put the batteries in here, it shouldn't make a difference about this ribbon cable here. In fact, what is this ribbon cable for? Oh, it's just for the LCD display up here, isn't it, and all the buttons. But as soon as I push this button down, it should kick into life. This should start moving and stuff like that. Obviously now I've got to make sure that I don't have my, uh, that I don't look directly into this laser here. So let's pop the batteries back into it. And let's uh, press this button. No, so it's not doing anything, is it? Right, let's pop the batteries out, and I suppose, well actually, let's just make sure that we have got three volts on this uh, 
on the this is very rusty look in here you can see it's gone right the way through to in here let's make sure we've got three volts between this one here and this brown wire so I'll pop the meter to DC and this one here is positive so let's go between here and here let's see what we're reading yeah, 2.9 volts. So I'm thinking that that should be uh, thinking that that should be fine. 0.4 does seem a little bit low, though, doesn't it? 1.4. Well, just in case it is a battery-related problem, let's pop some fresh batteries in because these are used basically with all the sort of Christmas decorations and stuff. I take those batteries out and then I reuse them for uh, various other things like for example the kitchen clock will take one of these and even a worn out battery will last for ages in the kitchen clock. Right so these are both 1.57 so there's plenty in these. Now let's press this button again. No, so still not doing anything. Let's move that. It's not even attempting. I can't even hear it trying to do anything. And I'm assuming it's got nothing to do with this uh, ribbon cable having to be connected. But let's just quickly pop this back in just in case. No, still nothing happening. And yet there is... Uh, there we go. Why is that so hitting this? Oh, you have to hold the button down. Yeah, you can just see it's doing the same thing again. Right, so I'm happy that it's not battery related. Right, let's have a look at this little switch here and see if when we press it, the contacts do join together. So I'm just going to put my meter to continuity. And I'm not sure where we have to go on it. Let's try these two pins here. Here and here. Right, so they're always on. So let's try this one and this side. That's always on. Right, but they, they're not the top two. Okay, so if you have a look, when I press it, it's working, so it's definitely not the switch. What else could it be? Let's unplug these. Okay, so they just pop out like that, that's quite nice. I just wanna see if they can be put in the wrong way. No. Classic Vince, I just broke those two bits at the end there. I thought this connector was the same as this where you just basically uh, lift it up to pull the ribbon cable out, but it's not. It's one of these flappy ones. So this little brown flap was supposed to lift up like that to take it out, but it's okay. I've popped it back in and it does seem to be gripping it. So I think I will be able to get away with that by just putting a bit of captain tape on it to keep it in its, uh, in its place. There does seem to be a lot of strength on it still. So I think I've been lucky there that I haven't completely mess that one up. Uh, right, I'm looking here, I can see a huge lump of corrosion. So let's get this board out and see exactly what's happening under this area here because maybe whatever's happening here is not allowing power to get into the rest of the board. Also just noticed here as well, there's some kind of, uh, some sort of damage on it there. Unless that's some kind of paint, I don't know. There we go. Right, so, yeah, look at that. Really badly done there, isn't it? And that is over a load of tracks and traces. Do you know what? 
I might be unlucky here because if that's gone through a load of tracks that might be a little bit on the hard side to fix. Yes, yeah, good one isn't it? Look at that there. Right, so it's going to be IPA time. I think to try and scrape this away and see, what's, uh, see what we're left with. Cleaned up amazingly nicely there, hasn't it? Look at that. I mean, I haven't looked closely yet, but there doesn't seem to be any damage going through it. So I'm just going to clean absolutely everywhere else while I've uh, got the IPA out. Loads of uh, corrosion has come off that. So I'm just going to have a very quick, close look at the bad tracks up here and see if any of them has gone through. Right, so I've had a look through the eye loop, and if you have a look here, I've zoomed right in, can you see like there's two vias here? Now, look at this one on the outer edge. Already it looks a bit iffy going round here. Can you see it's kind of gone faint? Goes along here, goes along here. Now look, I'm not sure if that's going to be intact going through this bit here. It doesn't look, uh, doesn't look great. So what I'm going to do is, and also the one next to it doesn't look great either. This one here. So let's see if we've got continuity down that uh, track because it goes from here all the way down to vias here. So let's see if I can get anything out of it. Struggling a little bit, it's trying to uh, do the, uh, the traces because from here it goes up to the via here. It looks like it goes through the board and it looks like it goes up a short bit and then through another via to this side. And it's a little, there's so many vias close together, it's actually quite hard to trace. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to zoom right in and I'm just going to gently scrape it with the blade here. You could use a fiberglass pen, but it hurts my fingers a little bit. Right, so I'm just going to gently scrape here. Because I can always put some UV solder mask on it anyway. Right, I think that's, uh, yeah, I can see bright copper there. So that's exposed there. Now let's go down to this side. So it runs all the way along as far as I can see and goes to uh, this one here. Definitely on the copper there and there and I'm definitely not getting anything. So that is actually good news because it means that that might be the fault. Now I'm gonna do exactly the same with the track next to it because that also looks a bit iffy. And uh, yeah, we'll see what's happening with that one. Okay, so I've scraped that one now, so let's try that. And no, I don't think we are. I'm just going to have a very close look. No, we're not. So we're not getting anything on that one either. So it looks like both of those tracks are not working. Right, I'm going to go on to the third one, just to, uh, just to see. I'll uh, quickly fast forward through that again. Okay, so the third one only goes to here anyway. It goes through a little via here, so that's kind of irrelevant. But you can hear that... Uh, that one's okay. So it looks like those two tracks are no good. So I'm gonna have a very close look and see if I can see exactly where they've gone because I'm hoping I won't have to run a wire the whole way, even though I could do. I'm wondering if it's just gone on a, a small little bit here. Right, so I'm thinking that it's this particular bit that's suspect, but I'll tell you what, let's take it from the top here. So we know it's okay here. It looks like there could be, could be a break here. Let's give that a little scrape. No, I so said that's probably okay. So then we go round. I think it's around this area here. So I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's give it a scrape because this looks like to be obliterated here, doesn't it? All right, so we definitely got a copper there. So now let's try between here and this top bit. So you won't be able to see the top bit, but I'm just again using continuity. Here and here. Right, and there's nothing there. Okay, so it means that the break is up here. Now I wonder if it's also broken down here. So now I'm gonna go between there and the point at the bottom. Okay, so there's no good there either. 
So it looks like it might be gone in numerous different places. You can see exposed copper on both of them there. So, uh, okay, so we know that's okay, the second one. Let's see if the first one's okay. So the first one's not okay. So obviously this is broken along here. So I think in this instance, I am just gonna have to run a wire right the way down. Yeah, look at that, there's nothing there at all, is there? Right, okay, so that's no good. Let's go further down. Let's go to uh, here. I'll try the second one first. Right, second one's still okay. But look, even the first one between here and here, there is nothing. Yeah, there you go, stops there. Can you see? The copper's gone from there. Now I wonder, uh, we, know it's, uh, we know it's not okay from there, there down. Let's see where it is okay from there down. I reckon it's gonna be okay from here. And I reckon this is where the second one's gone. Yeah, look, can you see the first one there? The copper stops here. Right, so I've got both tracks exposed there now, so I'm going to go from the bottom. Excellent. So the first track's okay from the bottom to there. Now let's try the second track. Okay, second track's okay there, but the second track does not go to here, does it? No, so it's broken along uh, probably this bit here somewhere. Yeah, it's okay there, but then it goes. Right, so with the, uh, I'm wondering how to do this now. I suppose I'm just going to have to run a wire between basically here, going up to uh, going up to here, and on this one. I don't know what's going to be easier. I might just jump her across here, or I might go all the way to the top. I don't really know. Either way, I'm going to scrape back. I'm going to scrape back more of the tracks up here. Right, so although they're very close to each other, I've got a nice bit of copper there to, to run it to. And let's uh, scrape back to here. There we go, and I've got a nice bit of copper there. So now it doesn't matter what's happening on these bits here because I can bypass it. Right, let's get the soldering stuff out and some very thin wire. So while I'm waiting for my iron to heat up, this is the wire I'm going to be using. It's only 0.1 of a millimetre. So one tenth of a millimetre, so you can see it's absolutely tiny, probably about the size of a human hair. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm worried about them hitting against each other. So I am actually going to use a fresh bit here because I've been scraping on this before. So the idea of this wire is that it won't short against each other because it's got like an enamel coating on it. But at the same time, I have to kind of just expose the very edges of it so it can uh, solder. So I'm just using my little knife and I'm just scraping the edge of it. And then when I've measured the length of it, I can then scrape the other side. I'm just gonna tin my uh, solder line. Here we go, so that's nice and shiny. And I'm just gonna try to add some solder to these pads here. 
and let's zoom in. I've got my solar line set to 350 degrees Celsius. Right, before the light bouncing off that, I can't actually see whether I've shorted those tracks together or not. No, I haven't. Right, so I have got some solder on there now, I think. So I'm hoping that will uh, that will stick. Now let's do the same on this bottom bit here. Now I know it looks like there's hardly any there, but remember the, the wire is only 0.1 off a millimetre. So you can see that it's kind of gone from a copper to a silver colour. Well, I'm just going to try to tin a little bit of uh, this wire here. Okay, now let's try to put that one on the, uh, what should we do, the inside one first, I suppose would make more sense. Okay, that's on. So now let's kind of put it in the uh, roughly the right shape. And we've got to bring it down to the other one down here. So now it's around about, it's going to be around, if I put it there, that's going to be out of harm's way. So I now need to scrape around here. Gonna try to roll it and scrape again, but I don't really know if I have rolled it or not. I think we'll give that a go there, see what happens. See if it wants to stick or not. Let me try and put some solder on it again. Might stick, let's give it a go. I think that's done it. Let's give it a wiggle, and then uh, if it doesn't break when I'm wiggling it, hopefully it means it's stuck. There we go. Right, so now we can do the continuity test, can't we? From the top to the bottom. There we go. Right, so we've got continuity now between the top and the uh, the bottom. So now we have to do the same with the other wire. Right, okay, there you go. I've got continuity on that one there and also the other one as well. So I will have to put some UV mask on it some solder mask but first of all let's put it back together well not put it back together but let's just put the uh, put the ribbon cables and stuff back in and let's see now if we have any movement on this right so let's see what happens now if I press this button there you go it's focusing excellent Right, check that out. Ready? Watch this. See it moving up and down? 
go that bit from angle. Right, so if we pop a disc in there now, I wonder whether we'll hear some movement. Yay, there we go. Fantastic. Right, okay, I am going to put the, I think I am going to put the lid on just to make sure we have sound coming out of it. And then we can give it a clean and put the solder mask and stuff like that on it. Let's see if we can get anything out of this. Right, it could be struggling just because it's not, uh, you know, there's ribbon cables hitting it and stuff like that. So I think what we'll do is let's put it back together properly, as in clip it back together, but not put the screws in. And then we can do all the solder mask after that. So we've made a bit of progress because now it is spinning, but it's not actually, well, it's not actually, read it's not actually reading the disc. So watch this now, if I open up you can see it's spinning. I wonder, is it dirty? Let's use a little bit of IPA on the, on the lens. Okay, that's a shame. It's, all right, it's saying no disc. So it's still not recognizing the disc. Which is some sort of progress, because it didn't say that before. All right, so the whole switch is working. Okay, did you see it move in there? And now it's moving up and down, and now it's spinning. So it's definitely doing what's, but look at that. It's definitely doing what it's supposed to do. Say no disc. Okay, I've got to do the school run. I'll look at this again when I get back. So it's a little bit later in the day now, and I've just had a very quick look at this, and I thought these things here were idiot proof, but look, they're not. They both go on different ways here. Now, I haven't watched the video back to see which way they came off. I thought when I took them off, they would only go on one way, but that is not the case. So now I'm just gonna swap them. I hope I'm not gonna do any damage. And I'm now gonna see if it does anything now, because It'd be kind of unlucky to have numerous things wrong with it. I mean, the acid from the battery or the alkaline from the battery would have uh, eaten through the tracks and, uh, you know, for something else to be wrong as well seems, seems unlikely. I'm hoping that that might be just it. Let's pop the uh, Jedward thing back in. Now let's see if it does it. I can hear it making more noise now. Sounds like it's vibrating a bit though. No disc. No, it's just not that. Right, so I'm going to look back at the video and I'm going to see which way those wires go round because that could be of some uh, some sort of major importance. So, uh, still not recognising the disc though. That's weird. Right, let me watch the video back. Watch the video back, and that is how the wires are. So it's not uh, it's not that. 
What I'm doing, I'm just going to focus right into this laser here. I've turned the lights off. I want to see now if uh, if I can see it lighting up red. I'm just going to press play. Well, I cannot see that lighting up red. Cover it there. I can't see it doing anything. And I've got my finger right down on this now. You know, this connector that I... That I uh... That I pulled out. So by pushing it down, that should be the same. I'm sure it's not that, but that should be the same. Let's try it one more time. Oh, there you go, look, there is a little bit of a red light. There you go, look. That's well, not very bright, but there is a red light there. So, uh... Hmm. Do you know what? I hate laser problems like this because I don't know whether or not the laser's faulty itself or whether it's something on the actual board causing it. I mean, that doesn't seem to be very bright at all, but I don't know how bright it should be. But there is definitely something there. Right, I'll have a, I'm going to have another look closely at the board, see if I can see anything. I'm thinking just back to other lasers that I've done, I'm sure they light up more than that. that seemed, even that, when that did work, it seemed to be very, very weak. Maybe there's something wrong with the capacitors or something like that, and it's not pushing the same amount of power through that it should be. I don't know. Let me have a closer look again. So I'm not really getting anywhere looking at the board, because to me it all looks okay, but luckily when it comes to Walkmans and CD... Walkmans and Discmans and stuff, the schematics are online. Well, the ones that I normally look at are anyway. The problem is I don't fully, well, I don't not fully understand. I, I know very little when it comes to the schematics, but I'm thinking it's a problem with the optical pickup. And on this one, it's called a DAX23E. Now, it is possible to buy these. The problem is they're around ranging from 10 to 20 pounds. Uh, and you can buy working ones of these Discmans on eBay for £15. So it's not worth spending £15 on an optical pickup when I'm not even sure if that's going to be the problem. But I'm thinking that uh, these here are the actual diodes. So I'm thinking this is the laser. Now if you have a look, we've got a motor coil drive which is IC401. And it looks like we've got the focus coil and the tracking coil. Now, I'm not sure about the tracking coil, but the focus coil is definitely moving up and down. So that says to me that the whole optical pickup must be getting some kind of power into it. So I'm thinking it's a problem with the lasers. So now if you have a look, when we come over here on the IC401, we've got pin 69 and pin 78. Now if we go all the way down, so basically I've made a note of where uh, IC401 is, it's actually on the, the back side of the circuit board here, so it's on the opposite side to where the optical pickup is connected. And I know that because basically they've very kindly given all the diagrams here and here, you see. So let me go right the way down to where it comes to the actual IC401. Right, so this is IC401 here. And if we look down at the bottom, We've got pin 69, which is VLG02, and it's got 2.1 written here. So I'm thinking, I'm pretty certain that that means 2.1 volts. And then if we look at pin 78, so that was pin 69, 78 is this one here, PAPC, and that's 0.2 volts. Now I've measured this, and on pin 69 I'm getting 2.8 volts. And on pin 78, I'm getting zero volts. It's not doing anything. But remember, I'm testing this without even any disk or anything in it. But if I've got 2.8 volts here, I'm thinking then that voltage is going into that laser. Yes, it's not 2.1, it's 2.8. I don't know. Maybe the something's blown somewhere and it's putting more voltage into it. But you know what I'm thinking now? I'm thinking the original thing said turns on but does not play. Let me just double check that. Yeah, so the original thing says, turn on, no play. So everything that I've been dealing with today is basically corrosion-based. I think now what might have happened here is the laser may have burnt out 
and then batteries have been left in it because it hasn't been working and then the damage that I fixed today is purely secondary because the batteries have been left in. I'm wondering if the original problem is is that the diodes, the laser itself has burnt out. So I know this isn't a fix but what I might do is I might muck around with a potentiometer to put more, more power into the diodes to see if they light up anymore because it's very hit and miss when I get that red light. So I'm thinking if I put more power in, I might get a bright red light. It might work for half an hour or an hour or something, in which case then I definitely, well, I don't definitely know, but it would probably pinpoint that it's the actual laser that's faulty. I'm tempted to buy another one of these on eBay, again, to swap the parts to prove the fault. But that's what I'm thinking now. I'm thinking what I fixed today was secondary damage, which occurred after the actual Walkman failed the discman failed that's what i'm thinking but let's have a look at this potentiometer and see if we can get any uh any more power into it and i'm just going to show you the voltage on these pins as well all right so this chip here is ic401 the bottom left pin here is pin 61 so i'm going to go over to 69 i've got three volts going into it via my bench power supply i've got the negative connected to the negative of the battery terminal here to get my ground and now i'm just going to put the positive to pin 69 and let's see what happens here so let me just find it. Right, okay, so there you go, I'm on it now, and I've got three volts there. Let's see if I can press this button and see what happens. Nothing, so I'm just pressing the button, you know, the lid button. So I mean, that's a lot higher than 2.1, isn't it? It's three volts, but saying that, I haven't got the laser connected to it, I haven't got the LCD display on the lid connected to it, so maybe when you connect the laser, that might draw, I don't know, would it go down a little bit? But, uh, I mean, that looks like it's high voltage. So now let's go on to pin 78. So the last pin here is 80, so I'm going to be going two along. Okay, so I'm two along now, and I'm not getting any reading at all. You see, 0 0.003, which is the same as me not really connecting it at all. Yes, there you go, it's points. You see it's just varying around the place there. That says to me that that's not, uh, that I'm not doing anything. I'm going to press this button, and then put it on the same pin. Yeah, see, nothing. So, uh, yeah, not too, not too sure. For me, that's a little bit inconclusive. So, uh, but it does suggest that there is power. If I've read that, that block diagram correctly, which there's a very good chance I haven't, but if I have read it correctly, that uh, says to me that there is power going in to this laser here. So you can see here that we have a little potentiometer just here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a reading, I'm going to look closely to see where to put my contacts on, I'm going to get a reading in ohms and then I'm basically going to put less resistance on it so more power is going to get into it. Who cares if it burns out? I mean right now it's not working anyway. Uh, it's a £15 device it's not the end of the world. Do you know what I mean? If I have to get another one off eBay and swap parts around it's uh, it's not that bad. The cheapest one on eBay looks to be about, I think there's one with a battery cover missing, but it says it's working, but it's been sold for spares or repair for I think 11 or 12 pounds. So I think it's worth doing it to see what happens. It would be a shame if this is working fine and this board is, you know, the chip or something is not working, in which case then I might end up blowing this. But I've looked at my other CDs and none of them have the same shaped one here. So this is like DAX. 23E and the others don't have the same one so there's not really much I can do I can't swap around any parts because none of the others would be uh, they're not compatible with it as far as I can see I'll zoom in in a minute but just to show you I've got my meter just set to ohms and if I go there's basically three contacts this one at the bottom and top right is basically in contact with each other so it's a direct is a direct short you see there 0.6 ohms but if I go between these two pins you will see it's 1.5 kilo ohms, and if I go between here and here, it's also 1.5 kilo ohms, so 1500 ohms. So let's reduce that down. Let's maybe put it to 1.2 or something like that, or 1.1. Let's just see what's going to what's going to happen. So let me just zoom in just to show you the. Right. So basically, this one and this one here is the short, and these two is where I get my measurement, or from here to here because these two are linked. So I'm going to turn it now, and uh, let's see. Let's see what's happening. So first of all, I need to make sure 
that I've got something that's going to turn it nicely. So let me get a tiny screwdriver. Right, okay, so that one looks like it's going to fit very well. So now I'm going to zoom out and we can watch the meter and see what it does. So first things first, I'm just going to get right down what that reading was. One point five three kilo ohms. So now I can always put it back to where it was. So now let's give it a tiny turn. I'm going to go anti clockwise. Let's see what that does. Okay, so that's gone the wrong way. I've given it more resistance, so it's 1.7. So let's go clockwise. One point three. Uh, yeah, we can. No, actually, it's not doing anything at all. So let's give it a little bit more. One point two. Perfect. Let's let's give that a go and see what it does. So I'm just going to connect this back up. My bench power supply connected. Let's uh, press the button here. Now let's press play. Okay, that's gone to there. Now let's see if there's any light coming on. Well, I'm going to have to turn the lights off completely because I can't see, but from this angle, it looks like nothing's happening, apart from it's focusing and stuff just like before, but there's no red light there. So I'm more in darkness now, so let's give that another go. Press down the button, press play. And now let's see if we can see a red light. There we go, okay tiny red light but it's not uh, it's tiny isn't it yeah, I'm not happy with that well what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a working discman and I'm going to see how much the red light lights up right so this is another one here now look at the laser here you can clearly see when I press this button in the red light look see how much this burning bright isn't it look let's do that again obviously I'm not looking at it just looking for the viewfinder yeah so obviously the the laser does have to be pretty bright much brighter than this is so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same again I'm going to put it right the way uh, right the way down I might even go down to 800 ohms you know 0.8 kilo ohms see what happens uh, see if we can get it burning any brighter than it is doing at the moment There we go, 0.8. I don't really want to change it any more from that because remember we've gone from 1.5 to now 0.8. So let's see now if that makes any difference. It's just a tiny, tiny little dot of red, isn't it? Just a tiny, tiny dot. Right, just for curiosity, I will put it back together just in case this is some sort of like different laser that doesn't brighten or light up as much, but I highly doubt it. Just going to put a bit of captain tape over this one here to try to keep a bit of pressure down on it. As you can tell, it just says no disc again, so that's not going to work. Yeah, exactly the same as it did before. Yeah, so it's trying, but the thing is, it's not recognising the disc because the laser isn't reading anything on the disc. No disc. So, uh, yeah, I think I've come to the conclusion. I could be wrong. I think that the original problem was the... the I basically, I haven't fixed the original problem. What I've fixed is a secondary damage of having the batteries left in it for probably years, and they leaked all over the place, causing that damage on the board. That wouldn't happen within a few days. That would have been there for quite a while. So I'm tempted to get another one from eBay. I'm definitely not tempted to buy the laser because the laser alone costs the same price as these and I don't actually, that might not fix it. It might be something on the board still. I'm just guessing, going by this, 
that the, the maybe something's happened to the laser. Maybe it's been dropped or something, and maybe it's gone faulty, maybe it's burnt out for whatever reason. I don't know. Uh, annoyingly, when it comes to products like this, I I kind of hate it when I'm dealing with lasers because because I don't understand them, I never know. So you see a little red light there and you think it's gonna work, but it's it's not necessarily, you know, like that could just be a tiny, it might need to be a lot stronger than that. I don't know, and unless you have another one, I don't know how you can test them to see should it be like, you know, outputting more power or not. So obviously if you can swap them over, that makes a lot of sense and it makes things nice and easy to, to fault find. But when you haven't got a second unit to swap things over, I really don't know what you would do on this one. Uh, I know people are probably going to say I could use my scope, but I don't know what's that going to prove. I've, I've seen that there's voltage going into it, I think going by that block diagram and the pins, whether I've read it correctly or not, and if there's voltage going in, what more really can I test? Or if you put a scope onto a laser, are you supposed to get some nice kind of waveform or something like that? I, re I really don't know. If that's the case, maybe then yeah, maybe that's how you test them, but I don't know that. So, uh, yeah, I, I may do a revisit on this depending on the comments that I get on it and also depending on... Uh, I might even just buy one for the sake of spending 10 or £15 pound just to kind of get like the, the, the final verdict on the video just to prove what this one is. It's a bit of a shame because I did do a repair on this. You've seen that I sold it on two tracks. Got it partially working, but as far as this is concerned, it's still as bad as it was to begin with because it wasn't working to begin with and it's still not working now. So if you think you know what's wrong with it, add it down to the comments. I've been a bit bad at getting back to the comments recently. I do read them all. It's just that I'm, I've got to the stage now where I've got over 900 videos. I'm getting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments a day and it was taking up a day a week trying to get through the comments. And I can't spend a day a week. You know, I need to make videos to earn money. Uh, so when I'm stuck on a video like this, of course I will go through the comments. I do scan through the comments every day anyway, uh, but I don't always read the comments on the older videos. But on an up-to-date one like this, I will definitely read the comments because that's how I learn. Apologies that I'm not getting back as much as I did before. Please don't take it personally. It's just a time issue. If there was only 100 subscribers giving me 100 comments, I would be able to get through that. When you're getting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds a day, it really is very hard to keep on top of that, especially when you leave it a few days. So yeah, unfortunately, in this video, I can't get this working. But... Uh, Maybe I might be able to get it working at a later stage. If you've got any enjoyment from it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.